Season 2 of the Pat and JT Podcast. Oh my, now I'm here at last. The best time, always gonna be the best. Come on. Exclusively on the Herd App Media Network. I am not bashing on women at all. I love women, but I'm just telling you, men are easier to shop for, and especially dads are easier to shop for when it comes to Mother's Day and Father's Day. I think I know where you're going with this. Personally, I would say that I know quite a few women who would really love to get a box from Omaha Steaks for Mother's Day. But since we're past it, okay, fair enough. Let's go to (laughs) Father's (laughs) Day. Let's just roll on with Omaha Steaks for Father's Day. And they have the Get Out and Grill assortment, which you can save a ton of money on right now just because you use our promo code of PATJT. But when's the last time you had an Omaha steak? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I used to have uh, I had one a few weeks ago. Yeah. And it was a New York strip, and it was fantastic. And I can't believe I actually cooked it to perfection on my grill. So I'm not the best griller, but when you're dealing with delicious, really high-grade beef Mm -hmm. like that, it's it's easier. You're looking at four 10 ounce strips, butcher's cut. You're looking at boneless chicken breasts, steak burgers, Omaha steak burgers, gourmet, gar, oh, what am I saying? Gourmet jumbo franks, and then the steakhouse fries and the apple tartlets, the seasoning, plus four New York strip burgers are free. That's all included in that. When I got mine shipped to me, I forgot about the seasoning, which I was very happy because I was out of my other seasoning, other Omaha steak seasoning. But what yeah. really blew me away, like legit, was the dessert. You don't think of desserts from Omaha steak, uh, mm. Omaha steaks, but the caramel apple tartlets were insane. <laughs> the tartlets. But <laughs> do not delay. Do it now. Get to omahasteaks.com. And then when you go there, you'll see a search bar at the top of the page. Type in Pat JT, all one word, P A T J T. That's going to put you on a different page where you will enjoy savings of 59% compared to if you bought all of this stuff individually. That is such a great deal. It's the get out and grill assortment from Omaha Steaks. All right, now let's get to the show. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I was listening to our open. I guess I haven't been paying attention. It says, here I am at last. The best part's always going to be the best or the best part's always going to be the last. I haven't even listened. I listened. Season two of the Pat and JT podcast. Oh my, now I'm here at last. The best time always going to be the best. Come on. Exclusively the best time always going to be the best. Network. Hey, I just, I just, the internet found that for me. I don't even know. <laughs> I haven't listened to the lyrics. I just, I just like the riff. Oh my God. I it's, like the riff too. Yeah. Right? I never even hear the music. Yeah. I, or the words, the words I mean. I right? Either. Yeah. I it's the either. first time I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. What did that just say? That's like rhyming please with please. Right. You know, it's like, you know. In, in, There's a in, lot of rhymes for that word, too. Like, really? Right. right. You couldn't find something else. Something else. The best part's always going to be the Go best. Thesaurus.com. Last. You know? I don't know. You can huh. find it. Uh, very okay. quick question. Dana Camp is in studio yes. with us. Before we get into the numbers and the people that have texted in their yeah. birthdays and all that stuff, have a question for you. This morning, I just, no big deal, <laughs> bought uh, $100 in um Cryptocurrency that my, mm-hmm. my brother and I have been researching and it's been doing well. And so I'm like, I, my wife, I'm like, all right, let's put a hundred dollars. months ago. I know. Never mind. That's, well, that's, <laughs> that's the story of my life. A day late and a dollar a Bitcoin uh, short. I, I but, think you might've got better deal post, post yeah. the Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, that, it wasn't, so. it was a, it's a new little one. It's a new little up and comer that I've been reading about and they're talking about them for. So it's not blah, blah. Dogecoin. Oh, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. So it's, it's another one to the moon, not Doge to the moon. It's you don't want to give its name? Because <laughs> it'll only raise the price. No. Uh, well, maybe. No, I mean, yeah, right. no good point. Because I mean, I mean, I'm just like Elon Musk. Everyone right? wants to be like. Pat. Yeah, yeah. It is. Uh, it's. Car- uh, what is it? Oh, hold on. He doesn't know. I don't it's remember. Okay. Uh, Cardana. Okay. It's a little baby guy. Well, I like oh. the name. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean to you when you hear Cardana? Does that mean anything well, in particular? It sounds like my derby name. <laughs> sounds like my your roller what? derby name was Donna Fook with me. So. Oh. <laughs> I, when I heard the Donna part, I was Donna like, I like that. Okay, so that's a good vibe Cardana. there. And I like, I like the Carvana commercials and that? the car vending machine. Right. It's exactly so, the same thing. Right. right. So feel. what are you feeling? Cardana. My birthday is December 14th. Am I going to be rich? <laughs> December 14th. Am I going to be rich on Doge, uh, not Dogecoin, but on it, Here's crypto. the thing about you. You are a risk taker. <laughs> oh, my God. And you're willing to take the risks that a lot of other people won't take. And if you felt drawn to that, I would totally trust it because you've got a five running in the ground, which is propheticness, which means you see pathetic, stuff. Oh, they said pathetic. Pathetic. Prophetic. 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 It's prophetic. like a prophet. So okay. like you, you kind of see things in advance and then you've got that eight energy, which is all about power, position, money, title, status. Okay. Right? He's been so, seeking that his whole life. It, whole life. Well, yeah. I mean like, <laughs> and he's a one life path, if I remember correctly. So 
He wants to be yeah. number one at anything he does. Sure. Yeah. Which is, is interesting. As soon as he finishes his drink. Yeah, I would right. trust. <laughs> right. I would trust. Okay. I would trust what, well, you, I, what I, you feel. And I, I feel it. And also my brother texted me about it. So I figured I, that's a double, so double thing. You talk so. risk ticker. It's hilarious. You know how many URLs he owns? Mm-hmm. Every one of his, every one of them is like, a little tiny patent in the making. Yep. It's, yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. He's going to leave his mark here. Right. Yep. Tesla didn't get, I mean, He's Tesla <laughs> didn't even become popular until the 60s. He was gone. Right. Okay. Like, so. I mean, like, you you might be like him, futuristic like that. Right. Wouldn't it's, that be well, sad to do all that? You Like like so many artists, they do oh, all that no. great work and nobody knows who they are until they're dead. He'll be so <laughs> happy. He'll still be happy. <laughs> well, uh, His name will awesome. go on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up 35 cents. All right. On the day. And I've been refreshing it every about six minutes. So I need to just pump the brakes. I highly (laughs) recommend you don't look at it for like a month. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. (laughs) Uh, It won't be fast enough for you. It'll irritate you. And then you'll be like, should I I pull it out? I don't know. I'm done. I know. That's it. Don't get in your head. You have so many numbers that are in the head. Yeah. You. I know. Well, my brother had this one that he, my dad and him are hunter, hunters, and they hunt with this guy who's a retired finance dude. Called him, I don't know, six months ago and said, hey, you need to, if you're going to do this, invest in this um, cryptocurrency, set a sell at 10 mm-hmm. because, you know, and so my brother bought in at like under a penny mm-hmm. and it got up, or under a dollar, sorry, under a dollar, and it Got maxed out, went to 10, and my brother's like, ah, he got greedy, set the sell to 15. Well, it got to 12 and then went back down to a buck. And my brother was lost. Well, Devastated. not lost, but he did. He, he, <laughs> I he know. had like 19 grand in the in his crypto, whatever account, yeah. and just like, no, but it's a little bit farther, a little bit farther, and then pff, bottom that's, fell out. That's, the, that's uh, the thing about gambling. Yeah. That's right? the hard part. Though, yes. Is to know when to walk away from the table. Them, right? Kenny Rogers? <laughs> because you right? can't, because unless you, if you hit, if you if you ride it and you make a ton of money, that's you know awesome. Mm-hmm. If you sell ahead of time and then it goes uh, launches, you're depressed forever because you're like I've just missed out you on a ton. You could have made more. And if you're like with my brother, like you get a little greedy and then it crashes, you're like, oh, why didn't I sell? So mm-hmm. it's like that little tiny little window of success. But in it there. could go back up. Right. No, it's Does you're he right. still have it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Like that's, that's the nature yeah. of the beast yep. is the up and down. Long yeah. Oh, yeah. term. So Long if he just term. hangs out. Just yeah. chills. Okay. Leave yeah, it there. Right. Just leave it right. along. Well, thanks, okay. Dan. I didn't mean to that was our investment segment. No, there no. it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the motley fool over here. <laughs> I think they might even sue you for saying that. <laughs> the, that <laughs> crazy crypto. How about there that? You go. Crazy crypto with that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so um, as we do, we, we usually have uh, text messages and DMs, et cetera, people wanting to know, what do my numbers mean? What's going on here? So you grabbed a handful of them I did. that, that so, came in. We aren't going to get to everybody's every time, but we're going right. to do our best to hit some. Um, if you've got any particular that, that made you go, hmm. Well, all of them. Everyone's fascinating to me. Oh, look at you. Everybody's fascinating. I love like, that. Everybody has like this unique combination of challenges and strengths and like, okay. it's really cool. So, I was thinking we could just kind of explain to people so they could kind of add mm-hmm. theirs up at home. Sure. That's a great Ooh, idea because awesome when we do idea. these, so okay. pay attention because you're not going to do names. You're just going to give well, the birth just dates. First, just first, first name and birth So that date. they know it's them. Got it. Um, <clears throat> then how, how so can they do this? The way you do it is you... You take your birthday and you take your month. And we're going to do this so that people can't confuse it and leave right. and lose and lose their master numbers. So you're going to take your month, and if it's two digits, you're going to add it together. Okay. And then you're going to take your day, and if it's no, well, okay. Let me back up. If you're born in November, don't reduce your 11. 11s, 22s, and 33s don't get reduced. Okay. Those are considered master numbers. So if you have those in your month and day, or it ends up being your total in your year, leave it um, and add it. Okay. So okay. your month, you're going to add the digits together. If it's your month, it's going to be reduced. You add that. So if you had 12, like you were December, mm-hmm. you would add 1 plus 2 and reduce that 1 plus 2 to 3. Okay. Add it together, okay? And then you're going to take the same thing and do it for the day. And then you're going to do the same thing for the year. And make sure you include the whole year. So, like, if it's 1956, 1 plus 9 plus 5 oh, plus it. 6. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then you're going to reduce that to a single digit. So, just keep adding your totals together until you get a single digit, unless it equals an 11, a 22, or a 33. Got it. Okay. Why not 44. Um, it really, that, <laughs> not, not to get into a whole no, deep but thing, it's, but it's arguable. Like it's up to 
the interpretation of the numerologist, like there's no fast and, and set way of doing that. Right. Some people believe that those master numbers go all the way through 99. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not that they don't carry that energy. I almost feel like it hasn't been unlocked by us yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. feel like we've gotten to a point where we've unlocked it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that the potential isn't still there. It's just mm-hmm. that mainstream numerology doesn't always go into that past 33. Okay. Interesting. Got it. It's like we were talking about potential. And, but, and the use, you don't use your entire brain. It's all there. You just haven't unlocked everything. Well, and those double, those, those numbers aren't really 11s, 22s, or 33s. You've doubled down on the experience of the single digit. Because 22 is a 44. Mm-hmm. Right, you could, it's a four. Two 22s or, two, or 40, right? I mean, it's two like, plus two would be four. Would be four. One plus one is two. Yeah. What you've really done is uh, doubled down on the experience. If you're it. an 11, you've doubled down on the experience of being a leader here. Okay. So you're a leader here to teach others to lead by the one plus one is two, by your loving example. Interesting. Okay. I like that. Okay. So, okay. So, so if everybody's had time to kind of calculate out their birthday real quick. So um, let's start with uh, Kevon. Got the first person I have in front of me. Um, Kevon is a three life path, which is the communicator. And that's your birth month. No, life path is the total of your birthday. Got it. Okay. So your life path is going to be when you add your day, your month, your day, and your year all together and then reduce, that's what you get for your life path. Okay. So his was a 39, and it, it reduces to a 3 because anything you add to 9 is itself. Another one of those little magic, Got it. Okay. Little right. magic things. Because okay. you're just going to reduce 3 plus 9 to 12, which is 1 plus 3, and you're back to 3 again. So anything you add to 9... <laughs> You still want to keep those in there, though. Don't pre-reduce because then you'll lose your master numbers. Okay. okay. And I know all of that just sounds like absolute it's gibberish to everyone. Like absolutely brilliant it sounds scientist fascinating. Is what you sound like. It sounds fascinating. I'm channeling Tesla. No, just kidding. <laughs> I wish I was channeling You're Tesla. Right? Yes. <laughs> Actually, that I'd be pretty cocky if oh I was Tesla. Oh, my God. Yeah. We were, we're talking we're about gonna, him earlier. I we're did his numbers. We're going to talk some more here yeah. just a second. Okay. So back to Kevon. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Kevon. Okay. So you're a three life path like me uh, with a three attitude. And that tells me that your greatest challenge is to know who you are when you're not in service to other people. Mm. Because even your birthday, which ends up being a master 11, is, is mm. highly intuitive, highly empathic. You, are, you can be the clown. You, you basically are the chameleon. You can become whatever the person in front of you needs you to be. So it's really important for you to know who you are when you're not trying to entertain or please somebody else. So do you think a lot of entertainers would fall under that? I've done a lot of entertainers. There are some, but but, um, without the script, knowing who they are is kind of different. That 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 they become their parts. Yeah, I do. Um, I do. I do see that actually. When you look at the Hollywood people, you do see because you would imagine. But everyone's there for their own reason. Do you see like like a lot of people that become a certain? We'll say Hollywood for that for this mm-hmm. this argument. Actors, actresses, are are they are they drawn for the same reasons? Like you'd find a lot of the same numbers that would be drawing them to that kind of it, career. Like I said, like it just like there's a reason any of them could be drawn to the different career, reasons, but for, for different for different motivations, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a one just wants to be center stage star. Oh, that's a good point. And an eight wants the power and the position that come with it. Got right. it. Right? And a five just loves adventure, and a five likes to put on any hat and just not be bored. <laughs> Got it. Okay. That makes total sense, though, because yeah. everybody is, yeah, all the actors and actresses are different. It's not that they're all seeking seeking fame. Right. Some are drawn for different for, for lesser reasons. There, there, the other reasons we'll call them other reasons that, that it isn't about the fame so much it's about playing a part or it's about but like you and I were different. talking earlier about mm-hmm. how um we're not just one thing mm-hmm. like you're not just your life path you're not just your I'm not astrology just a Sagittarius sign. you're not just a Sagittarius <laughs> so we were talking about yeah. how everybody has these layers to who they are and how these different aspects of them kind of come forward and show up when they're called on right so okay. I mean even though somebody might come across as like the kindest person in the world not that this is bad either but like their motivation might just be power Mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. So like you might not see that motivation running in the background or you might not know that that person has really influential gifts that could get you to do what they want, right? Like I said, every single person is just trying to get their needs met. There you no go. matter what your energies are, mm -hmm. your goal is to get your needs met, whatever that is. If, right. it's, if it's affection, if it's attention, if it's money, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what it is. That's interesting. I like that Makes line, sense, though. Because that's what everybody, that's really what everybody is doing. That mm -hmm. is the one thing everybody is doing the same. Which is why they're trying to get so their kind, needs met. Which is met. why we can all not take yeah. anything personal yeah. and kind of step back and like be like, oh, yeah. That's why. That person's acting like this. But because that's okay because I get why they're doing it. Yeah. And that's yeah. the answer to why. That's the answer to See, what every a great why. tool. What a great tool to have in the toolbox because mm -hmm. before you'd look at it and take it personal. Yep. But instead if you say, Oh, I see why you're doing that. Yeah. I get it. You need you need this. So okay. It's not about me. Really. Right. I'm just in the way. Well, no. No, you're just a means to the end. I'm a right? means to that or a means right. to the end. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. I, it's not it's never about us when someone else is doing something. It's it's always about what them trying to get their needs met. Whether they're doing it for love or through love or fear, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how you're mm -hmm. trying to get your needs met because you are trying to yeah. get That's your needs met. That's a good thing to remember when you're fighting on Twitter. Just going to say that, that the other oh, people, man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they're just, just, they're trying to score something. They want to be heard. They want to be seen. They, you know, yeah. I, I overheard um, a guy in the grocery store the other day and he was in line and he, was really upset and he was like totally venting all over this little cashier oh and he was like he says i'm in my 70s and and this world is just wrong and we never had to lock our doors and he was like so he was so afraid right. right right so like when i heard him ranting like other people probably would have perceived him differently but i just i heard his fear yeah i just heard his fear fear change you know, yeah, things have changed in 70 fast. years. Yeah. yeah. This last few years, right? It's just like really I fast. I mean, I think about where that 70 years ago, what that was like then versus mm -hmm. now and how much he's seen the world change in front of his eyes. The fear of not being able to to continue to mm -hmm. keep up with it is, mm -hmm. you know. Be left behind. A huge part of yeah. it. Like feeling disconnected. And no control. Right. And that thing we read, I read that thing on Facebook the other day that said, next time you see someone um, attention-seeking, change that to connection-seeking. Right. That's, that's, nice. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It really shifts everything about when you think about a person who is trying to tap dance and be in front of the camera and, like, always keep the attention on themselves. Why are they doing that? Are they lonely? Mm -hmm. Or even people who I absolutely hate <laughs> – the word energy, the, this phrase mm. energy vampire, I don't like it um, because there's no empathy in that. There's no understanding in that. It almost sounds like it's intentional because when you say somebody's such an energy vampire, there's, there's, a, there's an, an, what do you want to say? There's a, you imply an implication that they do it intentionally. Well, but for some people, vampire is not a positive word. No, it's not. <laughs> and, the, and that's intentional. <laughs> but for a lot of people that are that, it's not intentional that, that, that when they come in the room and, and the, the mood drops, I don't think they mean to do that. I would put that in the connection seeking yes. department. Oh, really? Okay. They're yes. just trying to get their needs met and they don't know how to do it the other way. And so they're doing it however they have to do it, right? That makes sense, I guess. But imagine if yeah. you were to throw that person some attention. You, and some, some, some of those people, you have to throw a lot of attention. And, and then like, it gets exhausting and it starts depleting have, your but bank. But you still have to have your boundaries, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And some of, some of those people that you, you can't give them enough attention because you can never fill their cup and then it becomes exhausting too and that's where the boundaries come in. But that's where you get to be the leader mm -hmm. and you get to set the example of how to fill your own cup. So I read the other day, instead of mm. saying, I'm so proud of you, what if we said you have so much to be proud of? I've I heard That's, that from. Uh, I'm gonna okay, tell you no, what. You're gonna make fun of this, but I was on an episode of Oprah a long time ago, there and, and it was <laughs> they had, she, had a, she had a therapist on there, and they were talking about um, praising your your kids, and don't just come out and just tell them necessarily that you're proud of them. Ask them if they're proud of themselves. Because, it's like, oh my gosh, no. are you, how proud right. of yourself are you? Think and it tends that. it kind of flips that compliment around and makes them get that strength from Ownership. inside instead of yes. needing because it from external exactly. an external source. Do you not say though when somebody says, "I'm so proud of you," it almost makes it sound like they were part of it. 
I'm so proud of what you, I'm so proud of you. A parent says that to yeah. a child, that yeah. was their child, so they must have been part of it. So when you tell somebody, I'm so proud of you, it's like you had something to do with it. There's, there's some ownership that's in that. In a weird way in my head. Well, we're always trying to get our needs met, right? right? So when so you think about that, if that you're would telling be somebody else, I'm so proud of you, you, you're right. It should be, I'm either so proud for, or happy for you, or how proud, you should be so proud of yourself. Or I hope you're proud of yourself, man, you've, you know, that kind of thing. Releasing you from that. Own, there's just something about it that has always struck me wrong. And I do but, tell uh, my kids I'm proud of them still, but I, but more times than not, I ask them how proud can, of though. they are. Yeah. How pr- you should be so proud of yourself. You did a great job. Well, and what she was saying about saying I'm proud of you and taking ownership at the same time, I would spin that in a way where I would feel like when I say I'm proud of somebody, I'm recognizing a part of myself mm-hmm. bouncing back mm-hmm. from the accomplishments of that person. Like, yeah. I relate to that. And that is something that I would also be proud of. And, mm-hmm. and maybe I see that in myself and mm-hmm. that's a mirror thing. And that's a good thing too. Yeah. It's not always, it's not always a negative to, to do that. Like it's you're recognizing your own stuff, right? When you recognize yeah. your own, like I was talking yesterday about cheering for yourself. Like why not? Absolutely. Why don't we do it more? Be your best cheerleader. Yeah. Cheer for each other. Cheer for yourself. Like are you waiting for a special occasion? Like, right. <laughs> like, just yeah. love bigger. Just give more. Love bigger. Like, just slather that stuff all over everybody. <laughs> I know. I, my, uh, my son hasn't, I've, I tell my son every day in text that I love him. I don't think he said it back to me in a year and a half. But it's a boy thing, right? Yeah. Like, he'll say, like, he'll. Yeah, but you're a boy. R- right. I understand. And you're like, no. you're setting that example for him, right? Right. 100%. Mm-hmm. Then right. I'm letting him know that it's okay to say that to yes. people. And, and I don't care. I'll tell him. Him, both yeah. of them every day for the rest of their lives yeah. and they'll never be able to say that I didn't say it and <laughs> and I, and I, and so they'll he'll know when he's in a relationship <laughs> right. that CYA you know it's funny okay let me tell you Prince Harry so the see, other day there is something in that for Pat heck right? yeah there is there's, there's, there's payoff yeah, there's it's payoff called receipts road. right receipts <laughs> <laughs> this is funny you mentioned that because uh, oddly, Prince Harry's story that came out just the other day, mm-hmm. you know how recently there's been a lot of quite the kerfluffle with the royal family mm-hmm. and some of the remarks that have been made by Meghan and Harry about all kinds of things. And there was a remark made about his childhood and how his childhood is so restrictive. He's so oppressed as a royal. It's, it was, it, you had no time to enjoy family. Uh, I never even rode bikes with my family. I, you know, there was, there was none of that. And then somebody... <laughs> All these pictures of him on bikes with his dad. <laughs> He's on a little bike. His dad's on a bike. His yeah. mom's on a bike. His For a photo are, shoot? They were riding their bikes. And the different clothes, several different settings. It wasn't like it was one day and they just changed clothes six times. Mm-hmm. God, I hope not. Mm-hmm. But regardless, <laughs> there were all these in different ages, mm-hmm. you know, on bikes. And it's like... You, you know, like you said, he'll never be able to say, I didn't say it. Cause now you've got the text to back it up. That's right. Cause you got the on screenshots. The, on Dropbox, yo. <laughs> he downloaded his, I saved it every day <laughs> for 27 years. <laughs> There's an, I love you. And I, I have gotten the occasional LYT back. Love you too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's a good thing. Oh. Okay. So love languages. Mm-hmm. You mm. were being very verbal with your affection Mm -hmm. maybe his language isn't verbal right right? no it's it's not not words maybe it's maybe it's gifts maybe it's time maybe it's quality time like one of the best books ever yeah honestly seriously it's huge i use it i help people i suggest it all the time in relationships (sighs) because first you need to know how you like to be loved yep and then when you look at someone else is like i can be really honest with myself i've i know what doesn't work for me and what does and no matter how much I'm attracted to somebody, if our languages are not close enough, if we're not willing to give the other person in the way they want to receive, mm-hmm. it's short-lived. It's, it's true. Or and it's, you may have exactly... Miser- or it's miserable and you just don't feel loved by that person, no matter how loud they are in their own language. Like in the book, it says like French and Chinese. Like we're both, they're both saying I love you, but neither one of them understands it. Yeah, well, that's a good analogy. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, that's in the. I think and that's you talk in about too. in service and gifts. Um, the, yeah, in so words. words of affirmation, acts um, of service. Um, I wish I quality could time. Yes, uh, physical and mm-hmm. gifts. So that's there's the five of them. And so yeah, one person if if what you like, so that's what you give. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You think that would be awesome if I had somebody who gave to me like I'm giving to you. Right. Yep. Yeah. But they don't want that. Yeah. They're, my, and they're giving you exactly what My prior marriage, wow. we were opposites. Like ours were completely flipped. We were always battling and arguing and neither of us felt appreciated. Mm-hmm. 
Seven. But you really both were, but you didn't feel it because well, you couldn't under, You didn't see it that way. No matter what the other person did in their own language, it didn't get received the way that there it was go. intended. Yeah. So it, it I it love does. the French and Chinese analogy. I do that too. makes so much sense. You can say a million things in a different language that mean so much in that language, but you're not picking up on any of it. Right. There yeah, that's a great analogy. Yep. And I don't, I can't take credit for that. That's actually in the book. So. Okay. Well, that's, <laughs> you could have, I would have bought, no. I would have bought, I would have bought that poster. No, but I highly recommend. So lovelanguages.com, look it up online. There's a free quiz. You don't have to read the whole book. You can just read the quiz. Yeah. It'll mm-hmm. take the, take the quiz, have the person you like, take the quiz. Yeah. They even have it for children. So and you it's can worth find it. out your kids love languages too. Like that's mm-hmm. really important. Yeah, what's totally. important to them. If quality time valued. is your kid's favorite thing like they feel loved when you spend yeah. time with them you can say but i love you, you just all you throw want ki- you just throw gifts at them oh, there like, you go wow yeah not gonna fill that cup yes right that's yep. a good one okay so do we want to talk about nicholas um nikola tesla albert or about? do we want to talk about another couple local do a couple locals okay okay let's look at uh, we're gonna look at jody okay all right jody <laughs> um jody you are here to carve out a path like what's you, her birthday she's i don't know if we should uh 919 okay i won't put Close the year in there okay. okay jody from 919 um your life path so you're also in service to other people and you really want to be your best at it and you're incredibly intuitive you just have to trust it so self-esteem you have three ones in your chart that is an enormous amount wow. of important ones in your chart so your life path your birthday your attitude They're all ones. You need to feel like you are number one in whatever you're doing. Now, Mm. that leadership energy of that one, the confidence, the self-esteem, it can be affected. So depending on where your confidence is and where your self-esteem is at, it's going to make a really big difference. So when I talk about numbers, they're neutral until we add our heart to them. So if you're coming from a very self-loving place, then your confidence is probably really high. And if you're working on that self-confidence, you're probably coming from a little more of that fear, which is really powerful when it comes to ones. The need to control outside of you, the need for approval from outside of you, Mm. and being judgmental, including like really hard on yourself. So ones have really loud inner voices that Mm. kind of beat them up. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that this will help Jody. um, Kind of pay attention to that. That inner voice is a lie. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not telling the truth. Um, Also, being a leader, we have to reorganize how we think about what a leader means. When you're a leader, it's not about being perfect. And those ones really want to be perfect. Like, you can be paralyzed with those ones. If If you don't feel confident, you will have trouble even starting a project or taking care of yourself, or moving forward in any way, because you you doubt mm-hmm. whether you can shine at it, or if you or you might hesitate to try something if you've never done it before, because if you can't do it perfectly, you don't want to do it because you oh, yeah. you think everyone's looking at you. But think about this: if everybody is thinking that everyone's looking at them, no one's looking at you. Right. <laughs> so I mean, like really, like think about that: like if every single person in the room thinks you're looking at them. They're all thinking about themselves, too. They're not even thinking about you. Right. Um, You have incredible presence, though. People notice you. So remember that being a leader isn't about being perfect. It's about starting again. Because the one is new beginnings, new beginnings, new beginnings. Nice. Just keep starting over. And do it until you feel great about, about it. And if it's not for you, but don't give up on it when you haven't even begun. That's the biggest thing. Start. How many beautiful opportunities to do something really fun have we passed up? Mm-hmm. I know I'm talking for myself too because mm-hmm. I have a one attitude. So I had to work really hard on that myself. Um, but until you know that. Right. It's like, oh, now I'm paying attention to that. When I played roller derby, yeah, I was a captain. I was a training committee member. <laughs> I was a leader. Like I Throughout the establishment, I was a leader. And I would go away for trips, and I would learn new skills, and I would bring them back, and I would teach the entire league these new skills. And when I did that, I would come back, and I would it would be really hard for me to learn in front of other people. Ones don't like to do anything new in front of other people. They don't <laughs> want an audience. And so I worked eight hours on that, learning that new 
transitional move. And when I showed it to, because I wanted my girls to see it done properly so that they wouldn't have bad habits when they did it. So I practiced and practiced and practiced eight hours. And then I showed them and, and the first two hour practice they had, everybody was so defeated. Well, so was I in the first two hours I tried right. to do it, right? right. Yeah. But right. they didn't see me. Mm-mm. They didn't see that part of me. They felt bad. They felt like they could never do it like I was doing it. Because they I, thought you just did it. And I overheard them being so defeated, which was absolutely the opposite of what I wanted to do with my team. Mm-hmm. So I pulled everybody in and I said, hey, this took me eight hours to get that good at. Mm-hmm. Eight hours. I have had some serious bruising on the booty mm-hmm. from practicing this. <laughs> so please don't be discouraged. Some yeah. of you are farther along than I was after two hours. Right. Right. But so I just see that. But you see what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. I learned such a valuable lesson from that. Like mm-hmm. you have to let people see you try. And that's all on the flip side of that is for somebody who sees somebody that's really good at something they want to do. They, they didn't see. It's like, you got to remember how many hours they put in right. to learning how to do that to, mm-hmm. you know, to perfecting that. It's not like they're just lucky. Yeah. They yeah. weren't just, you know, naturally gifted. There was actually some work that went into it. So it's, it's okay. Exactly. Jody. it's also like, I'm looking at the year, like every year has a theme for people. And your theme this year is six. And the six is all about responsibility and your health and taking care of yourself. And sometimes being called on by family and having to set boundaries with family. So I just want to put that out there. So this is a really important year for you to look at your health and and set those boundaries for other people. You know, set some limits for people so that you know where you stop and start because you are very much a pleaser for other people. We can't be everything for everyone else. Teach them yeah. to be their own leader. Be the example of how to do it. There you go. That's very good. Very good. All right. All right. Want to do one more? Do you want to do one more? Or do you want to do Tesla? And I so want to do Tesla. Let's do, we should do a but whole episode I, on Tesla. Let's do that. Let's do. Yeah, let's do one more local. Because okay, that yeah, Tesla stuff could be like an hour long. I want to. Well, it, it's not going to be an not hour too much because no, no. it's interesting stuff. And but I, uh, yeah, let's just let's do one more local. And okay. we'll call it good. Let's see. Because then, yeah, because I want what I want to throw out there, and, and we've talked about this in other episodes as well. But it's just uh, all of a sudden my interest has been fired back up. Mm-hmm. Uh, into some things because I discovered them, some things that I didn't know before. And th- just the realization that the man lived and my parents were alive at the same time this guy was still alive. Just crazy. Like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was alive in the 1900s. And I never really realized either that Albert Einstein was alive in the 1900s. At the same time. At the same That's time. That's crazy. You think and, of Einstein being that like early 1800s. Like, it, That's long. what I thought. Yeah. But no. Yeah. No. <laughs> but no, no so crazy so anyway all right go ahead okay so this one's for mary okay she was born on eleven twenty nine, and she was really excited to hear what i would say okay so she should remember this one right. <laughs> okay so mary has a 44 like we life app, talking about right so it doubled down on the energy which reduces to an eight she's she's very, she can be great at organizing and then teaching other people how to organize. She is, she's the power position, money, title, status, and balance, but she has an incredibly sensitive gift as a humanitarian. So she's probably using those gifts to help other people. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure she's somewhere in, somewhere in service to others, but she probably needs to be her own boss at it. Um, her attitude is a two. The two, now see, people might not get that she is as sensitive as she is Mm -hmm. because of that eight that eight is very strong that's the executive energy that's her purpose but like her attitude is that softer gentler so if she comes in with that soft gentler too and that humanitarian running in the background she can put a lot of she can get a lot done with that eight Mm -hmm. she she can get a lot done right the two Doesn't like to cause conflict and neither does the nine. They don't like to argue and they don't like to fight. So that's another Mm. reason why she should just be her boss Mm -hmm. or at least be in a job where she has power over whether control over how she spends her time. Nobody's micromanaging. She's not micromanaged. Right. And that they trust that she's just going to get it done because she can get a lot done. Now this year for her is a seven and that seven 
is a very introspective number, and it's a challenge energy for her eight. Hmm. So her eight can be very action-oriented. Go, 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 get things done, get things done, next thing, next thing, next thing. But that seven kind of made her want to kind of withdraw this year, kind of pull back and kind of become more of an observer Hmm. and go inward for answers instead of outward for answers. Mm -hmm. But she can be a powerhouse. That's awesome. She's not somebody to be messed with. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> she's not to be messed with. Um, if she's if she's like a even if she's like a, somebody who stays home and, and she runs her house, man. Mm-hmm. There's no not running that house, right? <laughs> so that's great, Jody. Yeah. Thank you. That's fantastic. oh Mary, our Mary, Mary that and Jody Mary. and Kevin, right? Yep. Kevon, Mary, yes. and, and Jody. Yep. Very good. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Thank well, you so much. The, yeah. the stack of emails and texts we're getting with birthdays keeps growing and growing. The files heavier and heavier. <laughs> so just you can text us your name and your birth date and year four zero two four zero three nine four seven eight. And Danny, you'll be back in it's every month, right? Or is it every? It's every month. Yep. Yeah. Once yep. a month. Okay. So also, month. I just want to pop one more yeah, thing sure. in for Jody. Or no, Jane. This one's Jane. Wait, was there a? This is crazy. There were, <laughs> there were two ladies who both. Go wow. Ahead and look. Go ahead and look. Two. What? Two. They were the same? Wait. Two. Jody and. Okay. So if Jane, born on 910, heard what I said to Jody, identical. Really? Down to the life path and all the numbers, identical. Jane asked about her fiancé. Okay. Now, Jane, this I don't know, are you planning on getting married this year? Because this year is a year. year. Six years are when people get married or divorced, have babies, pass away. Like, there's a lot going on in that year of family. Right. She asked about her fiancé, but I won't know. I have to have the birthday to do that, too. And then she wanted to know about name change. That that would oh. require a lot of energy too. That would I'd have to break everything down between her and and the fiance as well. Right. So Jane needs to yeah, call you. I'm super excited. <laughs> like everything I just said to Jody, like that applies to that applies. Jane as well, which is blowing my mind because I was like, did I just get a duplicate? No, yeah. it's that two is separate that doesn't happen very often. That, I'm assuming. Yeah. No, and that was the one that was all about being a leader, a leader, yeah. a leader, a leader, yeah. right? Like, yeah, so both those ladies. So if she wants to call you, which she should, what's your number? Uh, 402-960-0624. And you can text me, and we can set up an appointment if you want to. That could be a good idea. But yeah, getting your name checked. Like, when you're going to get married, knowing whether you should change your name or not, mm-hmm. because it's going to affect the relationships you have with your partner, say mm-hmm. that... Say that your partner and you share energies that connect you, but they're all through the placement of your name. And then you change your name. Right. And it changes the things that you had in common. And then you're like, who are you? And why did I marry you? Right. Like, (laughs) that's crazy. It happens. Like, people are like, I don't even know. Why are you? I don't even know why we're even married. (laughs) I don't even even understand. That's wild. But you've heard people say that before, that you don't consider. Well, I well when people it. come in and they and they've had um, mar- uh, multiple marriages, I go, well, do you want to know mm-hmm. what happened? I can tell you what the breakdown was, and yeah. they were like, what? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I can tell you why it didn't work. Oh my god, see, that's a whole nother area of expertise. A whole nother area. We've talked about you had the graduation gifts for for kids, mm-hmm. a lot, and you had some people call in and took advantage of that. Yeah. as a graduation gift to get a reading. If you've got a wedding coming up. Uh, an engagement, change, like name change, one, name of, change any kind. of any kind. Yep. This is the time. Or a marriage postmortem to find out, to what, find happened. out what happened. So you don't do it again so it doesn't happen again. A little again. debriefing. Right. Yeah. Well, right. well, sometimes you just want to know, like, what, why did that go down the way it went right. down? Did I do that? Yeah. Yeah. What was my part in it? I, if you can't see that clearly, I can help you see it. That's, in, there that's you go. very yeah, invaluable information. Everything like a lot of people go. Oh, does this is this date important? Is this date important? I go. Ah, I'm about relationships. My my expertise is in in relationships. Really. And knowing this is important also, so you don't repeat the pattern, or at least or begin to recognize it. Right? If you if you can recognize your part in create recreating patterns that maybe you don't like, mm-hmm. which happens, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And I I have a lot of experience in relationships. I've been married three times. So mm-hmm. I, I have had a lot of personal study into understanding those relationships. Granted, I didn't find this tool and this gift until I was in my 30s. But 
when I look back at the relationships, I can see why they were important and what part they played in my story. Because not only are you, do you have the numbers that come from your name and your birthday, but you also have the plan you made, which is an umbrella, like the seasons of your life mm -hmm. that happen, that we look at the overall themes that you've asked to have. And then we look at the personal years within those themes. So like, there's a lot of layers to mm -hmm. this plan that we made to come down here and have these experiences. Again, so, you're not just a Sagittarius. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was just Again, telling no. her how much I absolutely <laughs> do not appreciate when people do generic if you're a Leo, if you're a Sag, if you're this, I mean, some of them can be really fun and funny. So like those, I don't mind because I love a good laugh. Yeah. Those are fun. And there are some traits in there that crack me up. So those are fun and, for fun. But if you really want to get serious about yeah. something, those are probably not your answer. It's like you seeing those is like a doctor watching Grey's Anatomy. Just drives them <laughs> crazy. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> or somebody in the service watching a movie where yes. all the patches are wrong and the haircuts are out of regulation. And, right. Drives you know, nuts. I'm just like, <sighs> well, I grew up as a military military kids so like Can't even that. me watching that and my husband's in the military <laughs> and he's like it doesn't okay. matter. It's just a movie. Right. Go, no, it matters. It They're matters. fighting aliens, it dude. It needs to be accurate. <laughs> it doesn't need to be accurate. They're fighting a guy from Mars. It doesn't have to be accurate. It needs to be accure. <laughs> Dana, thank you so much for coming in. Absolutely. Thanks, Dana. See you Always next love month. it. Yeah, and thank make you. Make sure you get your, uh, your birthday and year, day and year to us yeah. at 402-403-9478. And Dana can get to you next month. Right here. Yeah. Production.